Yeah. Okay. I got it recording. Um, well, tonight we have um, the Tiffany Purdy with us tonight. She is a really, really good friend of mine. And we've been friends for um, like a while now. I don't yeah. know. Um, I don't know if it's a year or two, but either way, um, she's an amazing human being. And we talk a lot about um, like marketing and life <laughs> and everything um but she is actually not in the whole network marketing world um but i think that that gives her a little um more it's like outside clarity and perspective that i'm really excited that she's going to share with us tonight um but i will let her kind of introduce herself a little bit more she's starting a new business um and so i'll let her give you all the details on that and i'm excited to take notes i'll flip it over to you babe <laughs> perfect well, guys, I want to say, first of all, thank you for being here. I am so excited to be here. And um, if you've been on Rachel's team for a while, you might remember me. I actually spoke to her team last year, um, kind of talking about some branding concepts. Um, <clears throat> but um, we all grow, right? And so I've learned a lot of amazing tools that I'm so excited to share with you guys. And I'm going to be totally honest. Part of me has felt very pulled to share this with network marketers. Um, I feel like you guys are so bold and brave, and I remember being there myself in Plexus um, and feeling almost like you're out on a limb. Um, and I hear this all the time from different, you know, girls from different uh, industries, uh, whether it's beach body or all kinds of different things, and they just feel so lost because when you jump into this, it's not like you're jumping into you know, anything else. It's not like you're signing up for your regular nine to five and you get your training and you get your booklets and, you know, and I, I'm like, Plexus, you guys, and especially Rachel's team, um, you have the benefit of having someone who's very solid and who's behind you. Um, but with that said, I have a lot to share with network marketers in general. So I'm really, really excited to be here to share this with you guys. Um, so I read, I, I heard a quote, um, and I honestly can't remember who said it now because I listen to so much personal development um, that it just kind of is all blending in together. Um, but this quote especially moved me and I feel like it was very appropriate for you guys as well. So I'd like to open with this. Business moves at the speed of relationships and those with the most relationships win. And notice that the quote does not say those with the most sales win, right? Those with the highest numbers win. No, those with the most relationships win. That's very, very important to remember. There's a huge distinction between getting a sale and building a solid foundation of a relationship. So I'm gonna go into that a little bit more in one of my steps, but to give you a little sneak peek of what we're doing here, I'm gonna give you nine steps so you can follow along with everything that we're doing. Nine steps to getting everything that you want in your life. Sounds pretty good, right? Who doesn't want that? Um, so first, let me tell you a little bit about me and why I'm even qualified or why you should listen to me at all. Um, so as Rachel said, I am the Tiffany Purdy. I really enjoyed how you introduced me, so I'm gonna keep going with that. I am the Tiffany Purdy. I'm a confidence coach for highly sensitive women who are looking to own their space and create the life of their dreams. And um, so why, why am I doing this? Um, I have kind of a long story and I'm not going to share it, the whole thing with you guys because I don't want it to really cut into what we're doing. Um, you know, but I have a history of depression and self-harm, body dysmorphia, um, low self-esteem, I really lacked respect for myself as a human being. Um, so as a result, I accepted less than in pretty much every area of my life. Um, whether that was in my pay or in the types of jobs that I would take, uh, I would always be the best at them, but I would take these just shit jobs, to be honest with you, and things that were way below my qualifications, way below my standards. But for some reason, it was all I felt I could do or all I deserved to have. Um, and of course, in my quality of relationships, I accepted way less than, whether that was in romantic relationships or friendships or otherwise. Um, and, you know, it wasn't until I stopped and I looked at my daughter and I said, 
I cannot be this example for her. And I looked at myself and how I was treating myself. And I said, you know, I would never let my best friend treat herself like this. And I looked at my partner and I said, wow, I've really not been a fair partner to you and I need to get better. And so instead of doing something that a lot of us do, which is putting a mask over it and pretending like that person doesn't exist and like those problems aren't there, I broke free and I changed my story. And whether it's God or the universe or whatever it is you'd like to call that, someone, my angels, came and spoke to me and said, okay, now you need to help others. You need to go pour into other women who want to step into their space and do the same, change their story, and stop living that limiting belief system. So step one in doing everything, or in the nine steps to getting everything that you want out of your life is to figure out what it is that you want. <laughs> and that might sound kind of silly um, because it's pretty obvious, right? But I'm gonna take you through a little exercise right now. It's a little meditation visualization. And what you find might surprise you. I'm gonna be honest. The first time that I did this, I completely surprised myself. I had no idea that I wanted to do public speaking or that I was interested in writing a book. Um, so with that, let's see what it is that you really, really, really want. Okay. So everybody humor me. Okay. You close your eyes. <sighs> Take a deep breath. In and hold and let it out. And take a deep breath in and hold and let that out. And keep breathing your cycle of breaths like this. So, with your eyes remaining closed, look up between your eyebrows. This space is your third eye, and this is where we begin the visualization. So imagine as you're breathing that there's a little bubble forming inside of you, and it's a beautiful golden bubble. And as you breathe out, it expands, and as you breathe in, it contracts. And as you breathe, and as this bubble expands and contracts, it's aligning with the same expanding and contracting that exists in the core of our planet and in our sun. And you feel this pull in your bubble all the way up and all the way down. And you feel rooted and unified. And as this bubble expands, take a deep breath in and let that bubble shrink down as you let the breath out. And now with each breath that you take in, let that bubble grow bigger and bigger and bigger until the bubble is completely surrounding you like a beautiful shell. And when you're in this bubble, you feel warm and safe. You feel love. You feel the embrace of God, of the universe. You feel love and you feel it wash over you. You let that seep into your pores and energize your cells. And you know that you are light. You are love. You are divine. And you are the co-creator of your reality. It's you and God deciding it all. And you can be and do whatever you want. You can have everything that you have ever wanted. Now imagine 
that you're walking along a beautiful beach. You can feel the warm sand under your feet. And you can hear the waves crashing and birds overhead. And the sun is warm on your skin and it's a beautiful day. Now, as you walk, you step into this space and there's a beautiful golden light that descends from above. And as you step into that golden light, you step out on the other side and this is you in 10 years. What does she look like? What are you wearing? How does it smell where you are? What did you do this morning? Who are you with? Try and be as specific as possible. Now, wherever it is that you are, whatever it is that you're doing, sit for a moment and feel it. And be so, so grateful right now. Like this experience is happening to you right now. Let the universe know that you trust that this or something better will be your reality. Now continue breathing, and when you're ready, you can go ahead and open your eyes. Okay. That's one of my favorite things to do, and that's generally how I start every experience with all of my one-on-one -on -one clients. And so then I ask them, what was it that you saw? Be super, super clear. And I'll tell you a little bit about kind of why we did all those steps as we're going along, because they're all relevant to the nine steps. So step two is discovering what is holding you back. Now this might sound a little obvious, but you have an ego. Uh, we all have an ego. Our ego is that self-identifier, the I, I, the me that recognizes myself as Tiffany and separates us from being one, right? So your ego is like a little child and it's scared of change and it wants you to stay safe, plain and simple. And if that means holding you back in a stagnant, you know, reality, the thing that you're living in now, whether you're miserable or happy is irrelevant, your ego knows you can survive it. And that's what's important. So you guys already took a huge leap here. You know, you have already kind of shoved off the idea of, oh God, what if I fail, right? Because you've already jumped in. So what you really need to do then is discover what exactly is holding you back. And this experience can sometimes be a little bit painful, but that's kind of the point. So what we want to do is feel how terrible it is to feel the way we've been feeling about ourselves. Because a lot of times we're not necessarily fully recognizing these limiting beliefs that we keep true to ourselves. So for example, um, say you want to be making $10,000 a month, you know, say you want to be, you know, heading into that emerald, right? You want to get the Lexus, you want to go to Hawaii, you want the whole thing, right? So what keeps you from doing that? Is it maybe that you don't have the network for it or that you're not outgoing enough or you just don't have what she's got, you know, or she got in earlier than you or, you know, whatever it is, you're not pretty enough, you're not smart enough that, you know, you're not I don't know, personable enough, whatever it is that you, that you've been believing about yourself, get it on paper, write it down. And then 
I want you to actually sit there and look at it and feel it. You feel how awful it feels to feel that way about yourself. And then I want you to feel how awful it's gonna feel if you still feel that way in 10 years. If you never get what you want. If you wake up in 30 years and you're still exactly where you are, how awful, right? So what we're doing here is kind of instead of pretending that these feelings don't exist or trying to, you know, shove them down and smother them with positive affirmations that someone else made up, what we're going to do here is actually crush those beliefs and create new ones for yourself. We're going to write a new story because that's all these old belief systems are. They're stories that you have been telling yourself because they're simply not true. So what we're gonna do is feel how bad that is. We're gonna say, no, we're going to deny the truth and then we're gonna write our new one. So step three is rewriting your story. And I like to describe this, uh, a lot of us, or a lot of you rather in network marketing um, are moms, so this is a pretty good analogy, um, but really anybody can understand this. Um, so read how awful it is, you know, the things that you just wrote about yourself. And then imagine that it was your daughter that just came to you and said that, you know, mom, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not personable enough. So-and-so is just better than me. I'm not ever going to make it. What would you tell your daughter? What would you say to her? You're not going to let her think that her dream is impossible. You're not going to tell her no. You're not going to tell her that she's not worthy or that she's ugly or yeah, you're right. Maybe you should just go for the safe thing, right? You're not going to tell her that. You know, you might tell her to be reasonable and maybe she still needs her nine to five while she's shooting for the stars, but you're still going to tell her to shoot for the freaking stars. You're not going to tell her to give up her dream. So right now, in step three, you're going to write that rant, that story, what you would reply to those negative belief systems. And usually out of that, you should be able to pull out a few affirmations. And so let me see if I can find some of mine to maybe share. I know that one of mine is that I, um, I am worthy of massive compensation because I know that I've accepted much, 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 much less before. Um, so it's okay to own your worth, to own your space, right? So that's one of mine. And whatever it is that you're able to pull out of yours, write them down. There are apps that you can get that will send you affirmation reminders, all kinds of things. Make sure that you are saying these things because repetition is key here. Affirmations are great, but personalized affirmations are game changers. So after we've done that, <clears throat> We want to go into step four, which is watching for the signs, because let me tell you, God speaks to you. <laughs> the universe, whatever it is that you want to call it, speaks to you. And let me explain. I'm just going to tell you a quick story so that you can have some context of what I mean here. So there is a coaching experience that a lot of high level um, entrepreneurs that I follow have been talking about for weeks now. I've been so intrigued, I've been really wanting to hop in, but I wasn't sure if I was ready to make an investment like that right now. So when it came for launch day, I was kind of bummed because the investment price was a little bit out of my price just in that moment. Like I was waiting on, you know, invoices. I'm, you know, I'm always getting money, but just in that moment, ugh, I didn't have it. I was a little bit bummed, but you know, I went about my day. I was like, okay, well, if I'm supposed to enter into this program, you know, it'll happen when it's supposed to. So maybe a half hour later, I was scrolling in my feed and one of his affiliates, one of these high level entrepreneurs that I've been following, and I've been really wanting to work with her. She posted that she was tacking on an additional, you know, program to his at no extra charge all you had to do was sign up through her affiliate link i was so i dropped i dropped everything right then and i prayed and i said god 
source, universe, angels, if I am meant to enter into this program right now under these circumstances, under this guidance, please send me the financial resources that I need to do so. And I shit you not, guys. <laughs> in less than two minutes, I had a woman in my inbox offering to buy two baby carriers that had been listed in the Facebook marketplace for about a week for just over what I needed to get into that program. If that's not God, I don't know what is. Those are the signs. You don't need to force things, but the signs will come up. And if you're interested in hearing more, I've got a ton of these experiences, but I don't want to take up the whole talk talking about that. So if you're interested in hearing more of these kind of crazy experiences of God talking to me, feel free to uh, shoot me a PM. So step five in getting everything that you want is to stay grateful. And this is the big secret. So remember in the visualization meditation that we did, I told you to be grateful for that moment. Like it is happening right now. Like you are in that moment and you feel every, every bit of it. Try and step into that space at least once a day. And if you're interested, I actually have a sort of similar meditation, a little bit shorter. Um, it's actually in my freebie library at, tif at tiffanypurdy.com. Um, so you can download this and easily kind of go through this experience once a day. But, oh, and actually this kind of goes into step six. So let me just kind of mish these together, step five and six. So step five is to stay grateful. And step six is to visualize and meditate. So the reason that I had you do these two things together, the visualization and the gratitude. So you can look this up. It's a crazy study. So there was a study done on Olympic athletes and they were told, you know, they had these like little brain scanners on and they were told to perform, you know, their athletic skill, whether it was running or whatever. And they mapped their brains. So then they told these athletes to lay down on a couch, put the brain scan on, and then visualize this activity and imagine that they were running or whatever it is that they're doing. Your brain cannot tell if you are physically doing something or if you are just imagining it. It's powerful. And so the more that you visualize this, more that you're grateful for it and the more that you're grateful for the things that you have right now but the key is kind of staying grateful for things that are that you don't even have right now the universe and god will conspire to bring those good things to you it is the law of attraction and it's not just things and it's not just money it's people and that's a big big deal when you're in network marketing because eventually you're going to tap out your market you don't know unlimited people right so you need to keep developing relationships, quality relationships. Don't just hop into someone's inbox that you don't even know and ask them to buy your thing and then leave and then never come back again. And don't develop a relationship and secure the sale and then leave them hanging either because that's not going to, you know, continue to develop you. It's not going to continue to develop them. That's just not effective, really, for anyone. So, step seven is to vibe high. So, like I said about the law of attraction, you don't want to waste your time telling small people about your big dream. Some people are not going to love what you're doing. Just Let's face the facts, right? It doesn't matter. You can talk until you're blue in the face about how incredible your products are and how generous to compensation plan is and how so-and-so is killing it and how this is fully possible. It doesn't matter. There are some people who are just not going to like it. Don't waste your time on those people. Like literally don't do it. Okay. Be the change, be the thing that you want them to see. And eventually they will see it. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be a month from now. It might not be on your time frame. But if you stick with this long enough, I'm sure that Rachel and other people on her team are, have got so many testimonies around this. People who told them, no, 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 no. 
And then when they finally stopped and they left them alone, then they just kept on their journey and they kept succeeding and they kept growing and they kept thriving. Then those skeptics hopped back in their inbox. So really what the key to that is having full engagement with your people at all times. Stop trying to be on your phone when you're talking to people. Stop trying to, I don't know, message a million people all at once. You know, you really need to block out your days and focus and pour into the right people. Know how to go back and, you know, follow up and be highly engaging. And one of the things that really sticks out to me in network marketing is when, <clears throat> is when you get the sale, and this is kind of going back to the beginning where I talked about sales versus relationships, is when you get the sale or you get that person on your team and then you're like, cool, I'm done. And then you don't ever go back to them. You don't make sure that they're taking the products right. You know, if they're your customer, you don't help them, you know, if they need help ordering again, if they didn't sign up for, you know, auto renew, you know, you're not maybe developing and pouring into your team as much as you should be. And that's why they're not growing, you know, because you've got to pour, like Rachel can pour into you all she wants, but then you've got to pour into your team because they need to turn around and be able to do what you're doing. Right. So one of the greatest ways that I've heard this is Tony Robbins. He, um, he talks about these relationships and, you know, thinking about, it always being at the beginning. So, you know, when you're in the beginning of your relationships, especially romantic relationships, you're going to, you would do anything for them, right? Anything. <laughs> he does this thing. He skips across the stage. I'll take out the trash and you will, you'll do anything for them, you know? Um, but then time goes on and you know them and you're comfortable you don't give them as much, you know, then they ask you to take out the trash and you're like, what, what do I look like? You're freaking made. And it's like, Oh, but what happened to our passion? <laughs> so, you know, you need to remember to bring that passion, that engagement, that beginning kind of life to the relationship back every single time. You know, that is the way to keep any relationship alive. So imagine if you did that with your clients. Imagine if you did that with your customers. Imagine if you did that with your team. And you always went back and forth into them. So that goes actually into step eight, which is having a routine or a plan and sticking to it. This can be really, really hard. And this is where so many of us, whether it's network marketing, entrepreneurs, let me tell you, it is not exclusive to any of us especially if you're a parent on top of it, let me say goodbye to your social life, right? Um, but you shouldn't. You really need to have rest time and you time and time for the family and time for your business. So really that comes down to making sure that you have a good, solid plan. If you need physical help planning your life, you can come and talk to me. We can, you know, do something about this. I can tell you, you know, different routines that you can use. I can send you in the direction of some other people. Um, and you just need to decide, you know, you need to work with your life because some, some people will tell you, oh, it's absolutely crucial. You must have a morning routine or it's absolutely crucial. You must have a nightly routine. That doesn't always work out the way that we want it to, especially when we have kids. Um, I'm the first to tell you. So for me, I can make a really good morning routine work, you know, but sometimes if my kid decides to get up early, maybe get cut a little bit short. So I have to make spaces for myself during the day when I can. Um, but just making sure that you know is one of the greatest things that has helped develop me is making a theme for each day. So for example, I know a lot of you do follow-up Fridays, right? So consistently go back to the people that you talked to the week before and follow up with them. You know, Tuesdays, I plan my social media. You know, Mondays is actually the day that I plan my whole week. Um, Wednesdays, I do my, um, my podcasts. Oh, what was number eight again? Number eight was having a routine or a plan. Um, so, you know, it's going to be different for different people. I really, really hate when an entrepreneur or a coach or, you know, someone tries to dictate, you know, you absolutely must do this or you can't be successful because that's just not true. Then you definitely do need to make time and space for, you know, visualizing your future 
and, you know, making space for things like that, you're welcome. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you really need to be, you know, making the space for it where you can and knowing your life, you know. Um, so then the last one, number nine, is knowing when to ask for help. And God help me, <laughs> this one was the hardest one for me to learn because I am a Capricorn through and through. I am a Capricorn in my sun and in my moon, as well as it just being my ruling sign and about half my charts in Capricorn. And if you're a Capricorn too, you know that this means that I am about order and structure and control and growth. Um, so it's really, really hard for me sometimes to put that aside and say, man, I need help. I don't know it all. I am not the, you know, I can't do everything. So whether that is talking to your upline, whether that is talking to your network, whether that's talking to family, friends, whether that's finding a coach, whether that is, you know, finding someone that will help you up level and take you to that next step. Um, you know, there is a beautiful quote that knocked me out of my seat and it goes, wealth is access not necessarily ownership to resources. So be sure that you are accessing the wealth around you. There is a wealth of knowledge at your fingertips. And, you know, there are people that you can work with that can help you, whether that's me, whether that's your upline, whether that is your upline's upline, you know, there's so many resources out there for you, but you have to seek them out. So... Everyone, those are my nine steps. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm here to answer any questions if you guys have some, if you need some clarifying or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm sure that people can, if you want to type some questions in the chat, I'm sure that that would be great. Um, yeah, I can read that. It's like probably nine we can do that with. Um, so let me tell you guys, when you vibe high like this, when you are constantly in a state of gratitude, when you are constantly in a state of, you know, seeking the next thing and just knowing that you're the freaking best, right? Like walking around, like you are your inner Beyonce all the time. Um, number nine was knowing when to ask for help. Um, but yeah, like I, <laughs> like, it's okay to be into yourself. Like it's not cocky. It is not, you know, be in love with yourself. Like it's so important because who else is going to do that for you? Right? Like nobody else is just going to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, unless you take the time and do it, no one else is going to love you and respect you if you don't do it first. And no one is going to want to work with you and come to you if you don't look like a fun, happy person to be around. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so powerful. Like, honestly, that was one of the biggest game changers for me was actually realizing like, sometimes I'll get so deep in that meditation that I'll just start crying because I just feel so good. I remember the first time I did that visualization meditation, I had no idea that I wanted to be, um, I wanted to be a speaker. Uh, how long do I meditate for? That um, it varies. I try to at least hit five minutes a day. Um, three minutes is the is the minimum really that you should be hitting for. But try for at least ten. Try for twenty if you can. Um, how do you deal with negativity from others and not letting it affect you? Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorites. Okay, so I'm actually going to share with you guys. This is something I work with my clients on a lot. Um, so let me just pull out. I've got, ugh, I'm so about my notes, um, but sometimes I'm not the best organized person. I'm so guilty of that, but just my notes, honestly. Um, okay. So um, this is something that I picked up from a Gabby Bernstein um, seminar, but um, really she's a teacher of, um, it's a spiritual text. It's called A Course in Miracles. Um, and kind of the theme that she was reflecting through this was that the light that you reflect will empower others with your truth and they see a reflection of their light in you. So the first, she talks in this about the five sutras, um, 
and the first of the five sutras is to recognize that the other person is you. To recognize that every encounter is a holy encounter. And this has been honestly a miracle for me. Um, I used to struggle very much with anxiety. Um, and I want you all also just quick sidebar to notice how I phrased that. I'm not owning anxiety. I, I do not have anxiety. I at times have struggled <laughs> with it. Be very careful about your language and how you think and how you speak. Um, but recognizing that every person is you and literally this doesn't matter. This doesn't come down to, you know, any one specific faith, because I know that this does get a little bit into different faiths here, but every faith talks about this. Um, this is the Holy Spirit. This is the, you know, the cosmic thread that binds us all. It is God being alive and awake in you. And what you need to recognize is that some people aren't necessarily aware of that, whether, you know, they have no religion or faith or, you know, whether they have, you know, a lot of it. Um, some people don't necessarily recognize that that's what, the, that that's what it is, that we are human, we are spirits having a human experience. Um, so when you drop that, it's kind of, kind of dropping your ego for a moment. It's, it's impossible to lose your ego. Like you can't, you're a human being. It just is. Um, and it's how we get to experience everything. And that's beautiful. Um, but when someone's an asshole to you, um, just let it roll off your shoulders. That used to be so tough for me, especially as an empath. Maybe I might cry um, because I feel it, um, but I'm not going to let them know. And I'm not going to reflect that. And I'm not going to take it to heart. Um, I'm not going to, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it doesn't even matter. Like that's their thing, right? Like that's their issue. That's their complex. That's, you haven't done anything wrong. Are you, you know, you're not hurting them in any way. You're not coming at them. You're not harassing them. You know, if you are doing network marketing the right way, then you aren't, you know, being a sleazy salesperson. You're not blowing up their spot with emojis and you're not, you know, <laughs> dropping into their inbox without being invited there. Um, you know, so if you haven't done anything wrong, then don't accept their negativity. That's their shit. You know what I mean? So just bless and release, like literally no one to bless and release. Like that is one of the biggest things. Oh, absolutely. And you know, recognize that, recognize that that is your superpower. For so long, I thought the fact that I had emotions and very strong emotions and I, you know, feel things so strongly and I'm able to empathize with people and God, commercials make me cry. And I'm just, oh, I'm such a wimp. I can't, like, I literally, I recognized this was something that I was when I was 17 and I took all of my <laughs> best friend, my best friend is a few years younger than me. So my best friend and her friends, they were all 14. I took them all to see an R-rated movie and we went to go see one of the Saw movies. Everyone else is, you know, maybe scared or having like a normal horror movie reaction. I am bawling my eyes out, just hysterically crying because I'm so upset for these victims. I'm like, yeah, they fucked up, but like, do they deserve this? Like, that's not, <laughs> that's not a normal horror movie reaction. Um, so, you know, recognizing that if that is your superpower, then to own it, you know, that is such a powerful way to connect with people. Um, what were the five things? Oh, okay. So I can, I'll, yeah, I mean, I'll talk to you about the five sutras. Um, and, it, you know, honestly, if you, you know, if you guys want to know more about empaths, like that's literally what I do. Like I help highly sensitive women just like you. So literally like drop into my inbox. Like this is what I'm here for. Bye, um, I just want to say, have you read Strength yeah. Finder 2.0 and like done the read what? It's Strengths Finder 2.0. I haven't. Um, I'm going to like send you the link. You have to get the book and it like comes with this like code to do a quiz and it gives you your top five strengths. Um, and one of them is empath. And a lot of, I love that. Yeah, and it tells you, like, oh, please send me that. How to work with people who have empaths and like how to, like, you should link up with other empaths and like, oh, I love people. that. That's like, such a great idea. Different strengths. Yeah. We've been like really on that lately. It's amazing. It's good because that is, and you know, that's a really great point because, you know, you need to, 
I'm such a big believer in listening and observing, you know, the people around you. Like I'll go into a Facebook group, you know, for the purpose of networking and I'll be there for maybe a month before I even post anything. I'll comment on other people's posts and I'll just kind of get the, I'll read the vibe of the room. You know what I mean? It's like walking into a party. I'm not going to walk into a party and then act like stand up on a table and take my freaking shirt off. Like I'm not going to like try and own the space. Like it's mine to own. I'm going to walk in. I'm going to observe. I'm going to like mingle a little bit and kind of like get to know people. I'm not going to announce myself and then I'll be a little bit more prominent. And that's, you know, once you get a feel for, and it can be, you know, online, it can be in person. Um, it absolutely is a sixth sense. And, you know, I strongly encourage you, if you feel that you may be an empath or you feel like maybe you've got about an empath and some of it applies to you, but some of it doesn't, there are 10 different types of empaths. Okay. So there are so many different types of, you know, it's being an empath. is kind of like being a psychic, um, that there are different, you know, different things that you can tap into. Like if you are someone, um, who just always knows when someone's going to call you. Like you just know all the time. Your hand is like already on the phone and you're just like, someone's about to call me. And then boom, that's a different form of an empath. Um, so to go back and just tell you guys about the five sutras. Um, so the first one was to recognize that the other person is you, to have a, every encounter is a holy encounter. Um, I try to honor every single person that I talk to. Like they have my undivided attention. I'm not on my phone. I'm not thinking about like, oh shit, I should have done this or, you know, whatever. Like, I mean, unless I've got my kid with me and then obviously I'm a little bit divided. Um, but more or less that person has my undivided attention. That makes them feel very special. I learn a lot more about them and I'm apt to remember a lot more of the conversation. Um, and they feel so much more special. You know, it's so rare that people get your undivided attention anymore. Um, so number two is that there is a way through every block, every obstacle is an opportunity for growth. So don't get hung up when, you know, maybe you've got this visualization and I made sure to emphasize that you want to thank the universe for this or something better. Because I cannot tell you the number of times in my 28 years where I have been like, yes, my life is so good right now. And then it all came crashing down and I'm like, what? <laughs> Every obstacle is a, an opportunity for growth. So just take it in stride, know that the universe has your back and just be ready for the next thing. Just keep going. Okay. So number three of the five sutras is when the time is on, you start when the pressure is on, you start. So that's kind of what I was going back to in my nine steps. When the universe is telling you it's time, get to freaking work. Okay. Um, just be, like, basically that's like the best way that I can put it. And like I said, if you want to learn, or if you want to hear more of my experiences, I'm actually, that's what my book is about. Um, like a compilation of experiences of times where I was maybe sort of listening or half listening. And then finally tuned in to when God was speaking to me. Um, so number four is to understand through compassion or you will misunderstand the time. And what she means by that is that you will misunderstand the time. And this is kind of going back to some cosmic stuff is um, that we're in the age of Aquarius and the age of Aquarius. Uh, I can't remember what age we're emerging from. I think it was Pisces. Um, but the one that we were in was the very I, 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 me, me, me centric age. And the age of Aquarius is a we centric age. Um, so really, what the whole point is to kind of, and really that's what you guys are, that's what I loved about Plexus, honestly, um, is that you have good intentions. You know, you're there to help people with their health. You're not trying to sell them, you know, a skinny drink. You're not trying to sell them saran wrap for their stomachs, you know, understand through compassion or you will misunderstand the time. And it's talking about the time being the age of Aquarius and needing to, um, needing to be compassionate, needing to think bigger, to think outside of you and to think more about your fellow man, to think about how the actions that you are taking are affecting the world at large and whether you can make a bigger impact than you already are. Um, and then number five is vibrate with the cosmos 
and the cosmos shall clear the past. That's kind of what I mean by trust falling into the universe. Just the universe has your back. Um, always. I literally I'll tell you about the time that I went to Hawaii with 10 cents in my pocket and a backpack on my back. I had no phone. I didn't know anybody and everything turned out great. <laughs> uh, it sounds crazy. It sounds really bold. Um, people have really expressed every kind of sentiment I think that you could possibly express about making the decision to do that. But there was just something in me that told me that God had my back. I was fine. I knew that I could do it. So they're the five sutras. Um, and I believe that that's spelled S U T T R A S. Um, this is a, um, philosophy that comes out of, um, it's a spiritual text. It's called a course, a course for miracles, a course in miracles, a course in miracles. Um, yeah. So it's, it's kind of just like an old school text. Um, it talks about, you know, connecting with yourself and connecting with God and how to grow into the bad ass person that you were supposed to be. I'm paraphrasing because it's definitely not what it says. <laughs> But yeah, it's really powerful when you put all these things into play and when you just, you know what you want, you know that any limiting beliefs that you may have had are just bullshit. Um, look into one of my favorite um, spiritual teachers. Um, her name is Gabby Bernstein or Gabrielle Bernstein. Um, just look her up on YouTube. She's got a ton of stuff and you'll love her. Um, but yeah, I would, I mean, Feel free, anybody. I absolutely, I connected with a lot of people actually out of Rachel's team chat last year that I hosted. Um, and it's been so cool watching some of you guys unfold. Um, just, it's been such a treat and such an honor. So I would absolutely love to connect with more of you. Feel free to add me on Facebook, send me an email, hop on my website. Oh, right. My name is Tiffany with an I at the end. And I will say I was a little bit hesitant about making my URL Tiffany Purdy because everybody goes to write it with the Y, right? Mm -hmm. But I decided that I'm going to work until um, people just spell it with an I at the end because I am Tiffany. You know, you don't need to know how to spell Beyonce, right? <laughs> people will know. <laughs> but until then, I'll have to remind them. I really like that. <laughs> Um, oh, and also, I yeah, Alex totally can identify with me there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, especially with I, uh, with, I, you told me this and I just want to kind of brag on our team. Um, but you said that like, you don't, you're friends with a lot of people in Plexus and you're like, I don't really follow anybody except for you and a few people on your team. <laughs> Literally. Like I, and you know, I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. Like I might be friends with people, but I've unfollowed a ton of people because Let's be real. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a networker. Like, so if they see my posts and want to come to me, like, that's cool. But, you know, I'm not going to go out of my way to delete them if they haven't done anything to hurt me, I guess, you know. But at the same time, I don't, I don't want my feed clogged with the same ass post over and over again. I cannot stress enough to you. If someone posts something and that's cool, like, use, you know, use other people's ideas, but like, you are not like, I'm not the only one who's friends with a bunch of you guys. You know what I mean? And I'm not, not the only one who's not in the business who's, a, who's friends with a bunch of you guys. Right. So like other people see that shit, they know, and they don't like it. So, um, that, those are the people, <laughs> those are the people that I don't follow. Um, and I could literally like point out to you, you know, the rock stars, especially, but I can point out the people on Rachel's team because you guys already are sort of embodying the philosophy of the law of attraction. Um, a lot of you are already doing it, whether you're consciously doing it or not. Um, and that's freaking awesome. You know, you, it's the definition of your vibe attracts your tribe, right? Like if you're a low vibe person, if you're complaining on Facebook all the time, if you are not, you know, posting about the products or if you're only posting in a really spammy way, you're not going to succeed. You are going to be ambassador rank for the rest of your life. It's just not going to happen. But if you are super organic, literally follow Rachel, follow Alex, like both of those, I'm, I shit you not guys, you guys are actually in my see first people. Okay. Like that's legit. 
both of y'all have been in my seat first people for like a year because whether I'm in Plexus or not, you guys are really, really good at personal branding and you're really, really good at the law of attraction and really embodying what you're supposed to be and that vibe attracts your tribe. And I'm sure that you guys like, you guys aren't on this team by mistake. You know what I mean? You guys probably know other people who are in the business and selectively chose these people and you're on a great team. You know, when I, I actually, one of my clients um, is a former beach body coach and she was talking to me recently about wanting to get back into network marketing. I said, Oh, let me send you over to my girl, Rachel. Um, she's awesome. And her team is amazing. And you know, you'll get all the support that you need. I talked to her the other day on FaceTime. She's awesome, by the way. Oh, isn't she? She's so sweet. She's she's powerful. She messaged me the other day and was I she was like, Hey, I hope you're having a good day. I was like, Oh, I am. Thank you. So like I think it's so sweet when my clients like reach out to me that way because you know I check in with them, but that's nice. They care about me too. Oh. Uh and she's like, I threw my husband out, blah blah blah. I'm like, what? she's just like I couldn't take it anymore he's such a sloth he's so low vibe he you know we've been trying for years you know it's been a long time coming or whatever but it's just like I'm just like oh my god girl like that takes a lot of strength to know when someone is holding you back whether it's someone that you love or not you know and that's that's tough love man (laughs) (laughs) well well you went over so much more than (laughs) even like explained to them and I knew that this is how that was gonna go and so I try, yeah. I, I'm not the greatest with words and like written. And so I was like, just get on here and just trust me. Like yeah. I like to over deliver. Like I want to come here and like pour so much into Like I sat here, like I meditated for about 10 minutes before I came in here. I staged, I got my sage right here. I staged my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you so much. I love you. And I'm so excited that I got to do this. Like, honestly, you know. Three pages of notes. Oh, okay. You know what? And like, I'm going to tell you, like, this is so much work. Like, I'm really looking forward to doing speaking engagements. Like, not that this isn't awesome, but speaking engagements where I can like get the vibe of the audience. Cause I'm literally talking to a black screen right now. Like I've got my little like icon down at the bottom, but this is it. And I'm just like, am I, am I connecting with anyone? Is anyone listening to me? Do they think, that, are they just like, wow, this bitch. In my life. <laughs> Is all that I have to say to that. I couldn't do it. I don't, I don't, I can't like, nope. Well, that, you know what? Lesson learned. I was actually debating on whether or not I was going to film um, like a pre-recorded webinar to be my like funnel webinar or whether I was going to do a live one. I'm just, I'm just going to record it. It's the same thing. It's really hard to like, because we're the same way. I feed off of people's energy. So like I have everybody muted. So there's no background noise for the recording. And I'm just like, yeah. Am I helping anyone? Are you guys listening? <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. Um, well, we won't keep you that much longer, but okay. thank you. I really appreciate it. And um, thank you for saying the things that I sometimes can't say. <laughs> oh, like what? Oh, yeah. No, if you need me to deliver any tough love about network marketing. Girl, no, okay. One last story and then I will let everyone go. So I actually had a really positive experience today. And this is such a... It's kind of a way that I mean to approach everyone. Oh, good. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, So this is kind of what I mean by approaching every experience as a holy encounter. Um, So I'm in a group and it's a very active um, kind of high vibe group and I'm pretty active in it. And this girl um, added me today and I add a lot of people out of that group without connect, you know, without talking to them first. So it's fine, whatever. Like they added me first. So yeah, sure. So like two seconds later, I'm in her Facebook group and I'm like, okay, well, thanks. But I just did a Facebook audit actually of my Facebook groups because I've got that shit blowing up and I just literally can't anymore. I have to regulate it. So I removed myself from her group. And let me tell you, like 10 minutes later, I found myself back in her group and I'm like, yo, that's not cool at all. Um, so instead of blocking her or going off or telling her, you know, you're not doing things, you know, whatever. I just like literally messaged her. I was like, Hey babe, like, I know I, I'm so excited that you added me because I really love having more high vibe people on my, on my friends list and in my feed, you know, but I just wanted to reach out, you know, from the heart and let you know that the way that you added me into your Facebook group just now was a really huge turnoff. 
Um, you know, it's essentially the equivalent of being a mall kiosk worker and grabbing my arm. And when I pull my arm away, you snatched onto my leg. Um, it's not a really great approach. So, you know, yeah, and we don't, you know, and I told her, I was like, if we had maybe some foundation of like a friendship rapport, you know, that might be different, but I, you know, I don't even know you. I was like, I just wanted to message you. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I just thought that, you know, because we're in this group that you might like it. And I was like, no, I appreciate it. Thank you for thinking of me. I just wanted to be the one to tell you like this because this isn't something that is a class. We're not taught this and you're kind of not doing, you know, not working right right now. It's not just it's terrible etiquette and you're not going to have very much success. Um, and she took it really, really well, you know, and it, it ended up being such a positive experience and no one was mad and she learned something. And, you know, so sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you have to give them the tough love, but you just have to frame it the right way. Very, very good advice. <clears throat> and I think that anyone who is in a leadership position or strives to be in a leader, leadership position, um, learn that skill and learn it quickly. Because if you're my loved one or you work with me closely, you know that I didn't. <laughs> and that's so good, Rachel. Like that's the kind of shit I'm talking about because, you know, so many of these poor network marketers, they're just thrown to the wolves and all they know is to copy off the other people who also aren't doing well. It's like, can I help all of you, please? <laughs> um, well, hey, I'm going to, um, yeah. I'm going to call this and say thank you, but send me, um, send me your link again. You sent it to me before, but like anything you want me to write up, I'll share it with the team so that they can like connect with you that way and like subscribe to your email list. And I'm sure everybody's loving this. I can, I can tell, I can tell the vibe. Well, I love you guys back. So yeah, I'll send you everything. It was such a pleasure guys. Yay. Thank you, Tiffany. And we'll talk soon. I'll send you that book too. Oh yes, please. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right, bye. bye.